We know the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, known as NOAA, they're always ready to fly. And they fly even in the winter, those atmospheric rivers. And these planes head into those ARs, NOAA's hurricane hunters. They fly into the world's worst weather, and they're more than just the people who hop on a plane and endure a bumpy ride. They're scientists, they're pilots, they're meteorologists. They collect data on those missions. That data is then ingested into weather prediction models, which leads to a more accurate forecast. And we're only as good as those tools. And these hurricane hunters are part of a broader mission of NOAA to provide some life-saving forecast. So let's talk more about those planes, often the most interesting part of a mission, because collecting that data, I know, sometimes when it's just a bunch of numbers, um, Fox Weather correspondent Brandy Campbell joining me, and maybe you can relate, when it's a bunch of numbers, it's like, all right, but it's that mission, it's being in the plane, it's, it's experiencing, uh, I mean, Mother Nature's fury, but it's such an important work, and those planes are on display in Lakeland, Florida, right? Yeah, exactly. And right now we are standing inside of one. This one is known as Kermit. It's one of the P3 Hurricane Hunter aircrafts. We are in the cockpit right now. And I also have uh, Nate Kahn. He is the commanding officer for NOAA's Aircraft Operations Center. So thank you for joining us. Uh, this at one point, you know, was your home. Uh, you flew this aircraft. We're introducing some folks maybe for the first time to the Hurricane, Hurricane Hunter aircraft. So tell us a little bit about, you know, what you guys do when you are actually flying into these storms. Okay, so flying into the storms is uh, an exercise in, um, I'd call it nine hours of um, mild discomfort interspersed with two to three minutes of sheer and utter terror. Uh, as we're in a storm environment, you know, there's a lot of rain, mild turbulence throughout the entirety of the hurricane. And then as you hit bands of rain or high convective activity leading all the way up to the eye wall, they get progressively worse. And so when you look at the picture of a hurricane via radar or satellite, you can see those spiraled bands. Every one of those rain bands is a, a little bit of an adventure uh, in each individual storm. Wow. And just looking at some of the video that you guys take when you are in the air, I mean, sometimes it looks like you can't see anything you can't. out of these windows. I mean, it does look like a very wild ride yeah. and props to you and your team doing that, you know, really risky ride to save lives on the ground before these storms hit. Uh, can you just tell, tell us a little bit about where we are right now? There's a lot to look at. <laughs> okay. So this is the cockpit of a P-3 Orion. It's very similar to the aircraft that the Navy flew uh, for a lot of years. The Navy has since moved to retire them and replace them. Uh, this airplane was born in 1975. And so it's been flying for all of those years. As you can see with some of the displays, things have become more digital. We've upgraded from all of the analog stuff, uh, or most of it at least. Um, and all of the instrumentation, some of which is lit up, um, talks to us about what the engines are doing. There are four engines, and if you just a quick look, there's at least eight gauges for each engine um, and a slew of switches that wow. control all the various all parts of, yep, of those engines. And then down here is where the flight instrumentation would be, because we're not in flight, it's not lit up at this mm -hmm. point. But during a storm, as you said, some of the video you can see on YouTube and other places, you can't see out the windows when we're doing the most intense part of our work. Mm -hmm. And so those flight instruments are, are, are bread and butter. They help us keep the, the wings level, keep the airplane on speed, and keep us tracking in the right direction. Because if you can think about it, um, if you watch our radar tracks, we do a lot of flying sideways. You know, when, wow. you're, in, when you're in 200 mile an hour winds, um, we, it takes a pretty significant angle to keep the airplane moving in the right direction, uh, which is part of the magic. I didn't know that. <laughs> you learn something new every day. Now, Obviously, you guys are doing a lot of the work here, but some of it, of course, happening in the back with the instruments you use. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So a minimum crew for a mission like this is around 11 to 13 people. Um, there's only three people up here at any given time doing work. Um, and our job in the front is to keep the airplane right side up, moving in the right direction and on speed. The folks in the back are actually collecting data, processing it, and packaging it for send, to send it off to the Hurricane Center, where the forecasters will use it to inform the next, the next forecast cycle. And so there are, as you walk to the back of the aircraft, there are several computer terminals. Um, our our in-flight meteorologist sits back there. They're looking at some of the data that we take to try to help keep us safe in situ, and then um, what data is being sent off back, uh, back home for the forecasters. Right, and then all of that eventually lands on the television screens in form of, you know, the hurricane track to help people at home make informed decisions on how to, you know, react ahead of these storms making landfall. So thank you for what you do. Um, this plane, what you guys have been using, it's since the mid-70s, and I'm hearing you guys 
are working on a new fleet. So we'll talk about that more later on in our show. So thank you again for sharing all of this information, guys. I mean, this is just impressive. I can't imagine <laughs> trying to learn all of these buttons and switches, but it's all for a very good reason as we head into this hurricane season. Yeah.